Hey, this is Toby. So with this video, I want to start a new little EA coding project here on this channel. So we will take a look at candlestick patterns and our EA will be able to trade different patterns like Doji, Morningstar, Rising Star, and all the other patterns that are out there. And our EA will also have a small little panel here so we can see the different conditions. And just from the limiting testing I've done with this EA, I've got some very interesting results here, also on different symbols. So I think this approach can lead to a very good strategy. Okay, let's go. Okay, so before we start coding the CA, I want to discuss the general strategy idea because I think it's very helpful if you really understand what we are trying to create uh, when you copy my steps. Okay, so I created a little painting here and yeah, it's not beautiful, but this will be enough to demonstrate the idea. Okay, so first of all, this EA will um, work on open price only. So we only take action on the first tick of each bar. So let's say this here um, is the current bar and this is the current open tick of this bar uh, with the index zero. And this is bar one with index one and so on. And now what we want to do is to create a EA that can have different conditions to um, trade different chart patterns or candlestick patterns like Dochi and Morning Star, Evening Star, Rising Star and all the other names. Um, I don't know the other names, but I really couldn't care less. But with the CA, we should be able to trade all kinds of patterns and then we can test if there is some pattern out there that really has a edge in the market. And how we do this? So my idea is we just have different conditions and then we can set, for example, uh, with, in one condition that this um, high price here of bar two has to be higher than the highest price of bar one, for example, this is one condition. And then we could add another condition, for example, the open price of bar number three um, has to be below the close price of bar number three. So this is just a green candle. And then we have this uh, condition here. And then we would take a buy trade right here on this open tick. And of course we will do the opposite for sell signals. And what I also want is, oops, no, no, no. Oh shit. Okay, and of course we will have the opposite conditions uh, for the sell signals. And what I also want is not only to compare the open, high, low and close price um, of each candlestick, but also something like the range size of a candlestick or the body size. So for example, um, we can have, we divide this body size here by the total range of the candle. So this is of course helpful to detect um, here doji bars for example and we can also set a specific value so we can say okay this body size here has to be greater than i don't know 50 points for example so we get a lot of different options and we can yeah create our own patterns and test um, all the patterns out there with one ea so i think this will be very interesting and of course we can have different types of stop loss, take profit and exit signals, but we have to see. So this is the general idea I have in mind for this EA and let's jump to meta editor and we start coding. Okay. And if you think these kind of videos are helpful for you, where we test different ideas uh, with our own EAs, because I think the only way to be successful in algo trading is at least to test your own stuff. So if these videos are helpful and yeah, if you want to sleep well tonight, uh, you should leave a like. Okay, so here we are in the meta editor. So let's create a brand new EA. So I will do this here under my YouTube folder, right click new file, um, expert advisor template, click next. And let's name this EA, maybe candle pattern EA. And let's click next, next, finish. Oh, and one more thing. So as you can see right now, my editor is in dark mode. Um, I will make a post here on YouTube where you can vote if you prefer 
the dark background or the default white background for the future videos. Um, so this video will be in dark mode and just let me know if you can read everything correctly. Yeah, I just found that with this dark mode, um, especially the red uh, letters are a little bit blurry, but yeah, it's just because of the color coding from YouTube. So let me know in the comments what you think um, for the future videos. Okay, but now let's uh, start coding. Um, so I will move this a little bit to the left so we have more space here. And again, the first step I always do is to clean up uh, these comments and arrange the brackets a little bit um, yeah, because this is the template from Meta Quotes or Meta Trader. And I don't really like the formatting style here. So let's just delete these comments like this. Okay, now, first of all, compile. So we start with a working EA here. Okay, so let's start with a simple define statement. So I will just copy this comment section and let's create another one here after the properties. And let's rename this to defines because here we will set the number of conditions for our EA. So we can just write define and let's call this number conditions. And maybe for the start, we set this to two. We can increase this later uh, from here, but let's start with two. Let's also write a comment number of conditions um, because we will use the number of conditions um, multiple times in a code. And with this defined statement, we can just change it here um, from the Revit top and we don't have to go all the way through the code. Okay, so let's compile again. And again, for this tutorial or for this tutorial series, whenever I say compile, you should always compile. And if you have a warning or error, you should not continue coding with me, but you should fix the warning and error first um, because otherwise you would end up with a finished EA, but with a lot of problems um, to fix. Okay, so we have no errors in the warnings, so we can continue. So next step will be the include section. Um, so I will just copy again a comment here and I will name this includes. Um, for now, we will only have one include. Uh, this is the default um, C trade class in include. So we can just write the directory, it's trade, trade.mqh. Uh, let's compile again. Okay, so next let's create the global variables section um, right after the includes here. I'll just copy and paste this comment and call it global variables. So here we will create multiple enums and we will also use these enums later for our inputs. So the first enum is called enum mode. And here we will set different options for our conditions. Um, so the first option, of course, is the open price of a bar. Uh, and let's also set a value for each option. So open, then of course we will have the high, value one, low, value two, and close, value three. Okay, and as I said previously, I also want to have the option to compare, for example, the body size of the candle or the total range of the candle or the ratio. So let's write another option here called range, um, value of four, body. So the um, range, of course, is the distance between the high and the low, and the body is the distance, the absolute distance between um, open and close. And then we will have another option called ratio. So this is just the uh, body divided by the range. So this can be 0 0.5 or 0 0.1. Um, yeah, so we can use this to detect a doji bar, for example. And this has a value of six. And I also want to have the option for a specific value. So we can say, for example, 
um, okay, the body of the previous bar has to be greater than 100 points. And let's also assign a value here, seven. So these are all the options. Now I just want to add a comment for each one. So just open, high, low, close, range. Now this range will be in points and also the body will be in points. And the ratio and a specific value value okay so i think that's it for the mode enum open high low close range body ratio value um, five six seven okay so let's compile so we have no error and now we can write the next enum here oh and here for the ratio comment maybe we also add uh, what kind of ratio this is. So we just write body divided by the range. Now we can create a next enum down here. So this will be called enum index. And here we will have the option to select different um, numbers for the bars. So zero um, means the current bar, one the previous bar and so on. So enum index and here the first option index underscore zero and we also assign the value zero here then we have index underscore one value of one index underscore two value of two and index underscore three of course we can add like 10 options here but i would say most um, candlestick patterns only have like three bars back so we can also add more later so for now i will just use um, the index up until three and let's also add a comment here index zero index one index two and index three Okay, so that's it for the index enum. Let's compile. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now um, we need another enum to compare the conditions. So here we can set the mode, the index, um, and now let's write enum. Yeah, let's call this compare. Um, here we will only have two options, um, of course. Uh, the first one, Greater, uh, yeah, we don't need a value for this enum here. And the second one is less. And uh, let's just mm, add a comment. Greater and less. So that's it for the compare enum. Let's compile. And now we can already write a structure for our um, condition. Okay, so let's write structure or struct. Um, this is the keyword for a structure and let's name it maybe um, condition. Condition because this structure will hold or store all the info for one condition and later we will have multiple conditions so we can just create a array. <clears throat> Sorry, we can create a array of the structure here. So here we can have, of course, different members. So also of different type. So the first member here will be of type Boolean and let's call this active. This will be a simple flag uh, when, whenever the current condition is active or not, because for some patterns, we may only have one condition for other one, for another pattern, we will have two conditions, for example. So let's just write a comment condition active. And the next member, now we can use our mode enum here. Um, so of type mode. And let's call this mode A because we will have two modes per condition and also two um, of these index enums here. So mode A 
And that's also just write a comment mode mode A. And now we will use the index. So let's call this index A. Um, what I like to do is to keep these names here relatively short because we will use them a lot. And yeah, I don't want to call this index A because IDX, I think it's pretty clear. But for the comment, of course, we can write index A. And now we want to compare this value we get here from mode and index. For example, the open price of the previous bar. Um, so we use our compare enum here. And let's just, yeah, call this comp. Compare. And now we do the same for mode and index B. So let's rename this to B, B, mode B and index B. Now we also want to have a value because in case we select here value, we need to specify a value we want to use for the comparison. So let's, um, this is of type double, of course. Value. Okay, and when we create this condition, um, we want by default this active to false. So the condition is not active. So we can do this by just writing a, a constructor basically for the structure. So this has the same name as our structure here. And then we can just write active and the default value. Uh, of course, we will use these normal brackets here. So active, and then we have to open and close these brackets and a semicolon. So this should compile. Yeah, we have no warnings, no errors. Now, if we create an array of this conditional structure, uh, by default, this active member here is set to false. And that's what we want. Of course, you can also add. Um, set the other ones here. If you just add a comma, for example, and set the value by default to zero, that's also something you can do. But um, all the other values are not important if the active is false. We won't take a look at this condition. Okay, now we only have to add three more variables here uh, to this global variables uh, section here. So let's uh, use the structure to create a array. So we can write um, of type condition. We want to create a array called um, maybe just con. So to keep it uh, very short, con and the number of um, elements for this array um, will be the number of conditions we have defined up here. So now we can just use this. And this is our condition array. And right now we have two of these structures here and we can use two conditions to specify the pattern we want to trade. Okay, next um, variable here will be the current tick. So MQL tick type um, current tick. And last, we only want a variable from the C trade class. We include it here. So we can just write C trade and let's call the variable trade. And we will use this variable to open and close positions. Okay, let's, yeah, maybe we can also add a comment here. Current tick of the symbol and here, yeah, object to open close positions. Okay, let's compile. Um, I have no warnings, no errors, and yeah, now we can continue with the next part. Okay, so let's start with the inputs. Um, so I will just create another section here. So 
these are the global variables. And here we will write our inputs of this EA. Um, inputs. So of course we will have the, I would say the default inputs like the magic number. So static uh, input of type long. Let's call this input magic number. So the magic number, just make sure that we don't interfere with other EAs um, on the same MetaTrader instance. So just assign a random number here. And yeah, just make sure this number is not used twice uh, on the same MetaTrader instance. Let's also add a comment, magic number. Then of course we will have a input for the lot size. Type double input. Yeah, let's just call it lots and let's predefine this with 0 0.01. Let's also add a comment here. The next um, two inputs are for the stop loss and take profit. So of type integer, because this will be at least for now, just a simple stop loss and take profit in points. So integer or input integer um, input stop loss. Redefine this with I don't know, 100. Yeah. Comment stop loss. Um, points and zero means of the same for the take profit input take profit redefine this maybe 200 and take profit in points um, again zero means of okay let's Align this looks a little bit better and it's easier to read like this. Okay, now let's compile. And now we should be able to see the inputs from outside, but maybe we um, add the next input section too before we check. Um, so this will be our first condition. Okay, so maybe before we write the inputs for this first condition, we can write a group input just to um, create a divider basically. So it's easier to read. Uh, let's call this, I don't know, some kind of line like this and then just condition one. Then again, like this. And we can also copy and paste this up here. So we can write here maybe general. So it's easier to read. So these are the general inputs. And now here we have the inputs for condition one. Um, so the first input for the condition, and these are now pretty much the same as we have here for our structure. So the active, so input uh, of type Boolean called input and this time condition one and active. Yeah. And by default, we set this to false. We also add a comment here, um, active. Next input here is if you take a look here, the mode. So this will be of type mode, of course and call this input again, con one for condition one, and now mode A, and we set this to, I know, one of the um, options here from this enum of the mode. So let's just set this to open, add a comment here, um, mode A, and now input of type index. Again, input condition one, index A. And this is maybe index one um, as default. Let's also add a comment, index A. 
And now the comparison. So input type compare. Input condition one. Compare. Um, by default, this is maybe greater. And a comment compare. Okay, now we can use the mode and index um, input here again and just rename this to B. So mode B, um, by default, this is maybe close. Also here, mode B. Input condition one, index B. Uh, this is, yeah, index one by default, this is fine. And also here, index B. Okay, so now the last um, input here for uh, condition one is our um, value. And we can specify here. So input of type double, yeah, of type double, and call this input condition one um, value. By default, this is maybe zero. And here we just write a comment. Okay, let's compile. Okay, and also I want to align these default values here. Of course, this is not important uh, for the compiler, for example, but it's just easier to read. And I think, yeah, it looks better. And also if you send me code, um, please make sure that you yeah, follow the right or the same like structure. Then it's also easier for me. Okay. Like this, let's compile again. Perfect. Okay, so let's switch to MetaTrader and let's see how these inputs show up here in the stretch tester. So of course you have to select your expert advisor. And now in the inputs tab, we can see the inputs, the general inputs here and the inputs for condition one. So here now we can set the in, uh, condition to true or false. We can set mode A. So for example, open of the previous bar has to be greater than, I don't know, the close of the bar before and we can also use the value here if we say the body of the previous bar has to be greater for example than 20 points like this um, so we can see how we can set a condition and later of course we will add multiple conditions here to build our own patterns uh, we can then test with this ea if you don't want to miss that make sure to subscribe um, in the next part we will add uh, more inputs here and then we will link the inputs to our structure array and yeah if you have a question about automated trading or coding in general just write a comment if this video was helpful for you would be nice if you just leave a like and yeah i will see you in one of the next videos bye bye